episode and today I'm going to talk about what I had to do and what it took to recover from OCD. This video is inspired and dedicated to a few of the people in the WhatsApp group that I'm in as part of the coaching I had with Rob at OCD Recovery. I'm in a chat on WhatsApp with a few different people and there's been loads of questions recently about how on earth did I get the motivation to face difficult exposures, like understanding the books. How did I go from being absolutely terrified of my fears to able to have a relatively normal life? And I was just reflecting when they asked those questions on how did I do that? Because the more they've shared with me about how they're feeling right now, the more I can remember just how difficult it was. And something that really has stayed with me since chatting with them the last few days is that they're like, seriously though, were you this bad? And it's almost like I'm a future version of what they could be in terms of how I live my life now. And I just wanted this video to really strongly get across just how bad OCD was for me. So if you are really suffering with your OCD right now, whether that be more harm OCD, POCD, any of the more taboo topics, which is what my experience was, maybe there's real event OCD in there for you and you're really struggling with guilt, extreme guilt, feelings of shame, feelings of loneliness, feelings of isolation from the rest of society, feeling like you're broken and things are hopeless and you can't talk to anyone about it because it feels so shameful, this is definitely going to be for you. So if you're currently in a place where you can't imagine waking up in the morning without that sinking, like if everyone knew what I'd done or what I'd thought, they would never speak to me again. If you've got that chronic anxiety that just from the second you wake up to the second you go to sleep, if you're feeling all those things, I was definitely there too. I always remember that I would wake up and I'd have like maybe three or four seconds and I'd feel really like the sleep had kind of done its job and I felt really refreshed and renewed, almost like, oh my gosh, it's gone today, it's better. And then a thought would come in and it would just smash me back down to reality. Like, no, you're still sick. There's something wrong with you. If everyone knew, they would never want to talk to you again. And then I would just be completely locked in just trying to do things to get rid of the thoughts. And what I've been saying to people who are on their OCD recovery journey, whether that be with a therapist, whether that be with the, the coaches at OCD recovery, like Nick or Rob or Momin, I always say to them, you know, you're further ahead than I was. So maybe they've been suffering for a few years and they're on that journey and they're like, how did you live like this? I tried to remind them that at that point, at those worst parts of my suffering, I didn't even know I had OCD. So I went from age eight to age 29 without even knowing I had OCD with extreme suffering. I mean, the age eight was when things started to creep in like obsessions and stuff. And it was all around natural disasters and stuff like that. But once I got to more like 15, that's when it got really bad. And then from like 17 and beyond, my life was just, I don't like to use the term wrecked because it's very, strong and irrational but in terms of my day-to-day -day functioning it was very much controlled by OCD and my life got smaller and smaller so it got completely boxed in and so that feeling of just waking up and facing another day and just being so agonized of how I would do that I just used to throw myself into work and just spent hours with my brain completely numbed by tasks and activities and then as soon as I would take a breather or a break, I would be thrown back into terror. I also would have like, so the, the chronic guilt and anxiety was always there all the time, but I would also have several extreme panic attacks a day. So when a thought came in or any form of trigger, like even a word that rhymed with something I would be triggered by being mentioned or like an image, you know, I often talk about there was an image I was sitting in a meeting once and someone had an image of their child on a mug and I had the biggest panic attack I've ever had because avoidance had become such a big part of my life that things like that would send me completely spiraling and even just like a word that rhymed with my fears would make me have a panic attack and so yeah I just lived with panic attacks and I, I highlight all that because 
it's easy just to talk about what to do and how to get better but I think more people need to say who have recovered how bad it was versus now so if I want if I can describe to you what a typical morning is like today um so 2023 I would say I started working on my OCD in 2017 with okay therapy it was CBT it was good we were doing some exposures I was learning about OCD so life got about 60 percent better but then when I had my child um I was just thrown back into terror and life was just on edge so I wasn't having multiple panic attacks a day but I wasn't happy and so then in 2019 2020 that's when I started working with Robert OCD recovery and after eight months I felt dramatic shifts and after 18 to 24 months that's when I would say yeah I'm recovered and obviously the intensity of what I did would like go up and down depending on where I was in life so you know it's not like you go into therapy and then you like dedicate it to your homework every single day for six months and then it's gone you know I would have times where I was so triggered that I would just be like I don't want to talk I don't want therapy for weeks and other times I'd be highly motivated and other times I would just be battling through and pushing through with no hope and then I might have six months where I just see how I get on and then I might have a bit more therapy and then six months more and then coasting for a bit and it like that's why you can't really say here's how long it takes to recover because all of those things have to be factored in it's like oh i've been having therapy for three months but i'm not better yeah but have you been doing the exposures and part of the journey is putting off exposures like that's part of the journey because you have to get to a place where you're so frustrated with yourself that you're like living with this condition is worse than doing the work now that's where i got to and so i can tell you a bit more about my recovery journey but back to my point about what it's like to wake up in the morning depending on what is going on in my life because what i've learned after ocd recovery life is still hard but in very different ways and nowhere near to the level of ocd recovery of ocd suffering so this morning i woke up and i felt tired like i could have done with another hour and a half but ultimately looking forward to what i had planned in my day zero anxiety zero guilt zero worries zero intrusive thoughts even if they were intrusive thoughts, I didn't notice them or think about them because they would have been intrusive, but not noticeable. Like Rob often says on here, intrusive thoughts lose their intrusiveness. They're just there. But I don't remember. That's I literally, I don't know if I had intrusive thoughts this morning. I don't think I did. Um, and then I kind of, this morning dragged myself up, got a coffee and then felt a bit human and got on with my day other days where I've had a great sleep, I've had a great night, I am like, yes, it's the morning, I'm so excited for what I'm going to do today, because I've remember, like I wake up and I feel neutral, and then I remember what's planned for the day, and I'm like, yes, that's going to be so fun, so like, that's a normal morning, and then on a bad morning, to say like, my house is trashed from my kids, and I know that they I haven't really got much to go in their lunch boxes, and I don't know what I'm going to put in them, and I know this sounds ridiculous to complain about and I, I have to remind myself of that but I would have given anything for these type of worries in the morning or maybe I feel like I've got too many tasks to achieve in the day and not enough hours and I feel down and beaten down by that or maybe um, there's something going on with a family member and I'm thinking oh I wouldn't like to have to deal with that today I'd prefer if I didn't or maybe I haven't been having enough time socially with friends and I've just been like mum and working and I'm feeling a bit sad about that. So it's all like healthy emotions, healthy concerns, um, things I could easily, easily, my gosh, I'm so tired today. Things I could easily um, overcome within a few seconds. So for example, I if I found that one day I was getting a bit upset about a family situation, I would think, right, I'm getting more irrational here. My rational brain is slipping to the side at the moment. Okay, um, what can we do here? Well, why is it so awful if this family situation doesn't sort itself out? Where is it written down that life is supposed to be perfect? If it's not this, it's going to be something else. And so that's the maximum of what I need to do to get myself back on track with life at the moment. So 
my my husband and I have been going through a situation with his work and he's like I can't wait it's a few weeks now and all this will be behind us everything's going to be fixed and sorted and then we can relax and I just sort of said yes but then there'll be something else so we have to be happy like this second with the chaos of the house with the situation at work with everything else that's going on with your current illness he's got an illness this week we've got to figure out a way to be happy right now rather than waiting for that thing to be sorted and so that's really the same of OCD part of my recovery process was how do I get better okay I desperately want to get better but that actually was holding me back from getting better because as long as you desperately want anxiety gone the tighter it's going to hold on to you so the sort of attitude that I adopted was I'm living my life and you are coming with me I'm no longer letting you tell me what I can and can't do I'm going to the places that trigger me I'm not going to say no to anything as a result of you telling me it's dangerous I'm going to do my homework and my exposure work and my disputing irrational beliefs. I'm going to read the reading books and no matter how I feel is irrelevant. That was one of the biggest shifts to me was realizing that how I feel is just a feeling and something I apply every day when I wake up exhausted and I have this small OCD thing going, oh my gosh, you're exhausted. You're going to have a bad day. I think, well, I can live exhausted. It's fine. There's no like right now, I if I was able to, I would fall asleep for three hours. I can live exhausted. It's not a problem. It's just a feeling. And when I can catch up on sleep, I will. And that's fine. And the same with OCD. I can live like this. I don't want to, but I can live like this. And the more that you work on getting on with life anyway, doing your homework, letting it be that you feel this way right now and not needing it gone desperately and not wondering how long it's going to be and not panicking the more it's going to leave you because it it's almost like your brain no longer cares whether like you're not separate from your ocd this is something i really encourage people to talk about is like it's not me it's my ocd and oh ocd is a bully in your brain no your brain is you there's no separate thing I think people use this as a compulsion to be like, my thoughts aren't me, which of course is true. Thoughts are just passing things and our brain has latched to something that we're scared of. And so recovery is about learning not to be scared of something. But there's no such thing as this brain and then you, you are your brain. So it's like figuring out how to go, well, you're going to do your thing. I'm not scared of living like this anymore. And this is where books like Man's Search for Meaning really help me, you know, the guy in there, Viktor Frankl, he survived for a long, long time in a concentration camp with barely any food, with extreme labor in extreme conditions, you know, seeing people dying all around him. And he managed to find meaning in that suffering. And so if you can see your OCD journey in the same way with that grit and determination of where is it written down that life is supposed to be perfect and simple and easy? Where is it? where does it say that I should have the same experience as everyone else who doesn't have OCD? That for me was like massively game changing because life isn't meant to be easy. No one can kind of compare themselves to other people. And actually for me, making peace that some people have got it easier and better than me is also key. Why do I need to be the same as everyone else? Why do I need to have the same as them? So in a nutshell, what I did to get better was I mustered up the determination to go, I'm not living like this anymore. And do I really want to waste another 10 years of feeling this way and, and dealing with OCD and, and it calling the shots in every area of my life? Or do I want to take control and live the life I want? And overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the answer was, I want to change. I don't want to do this anymore. And I went through phases where I was like, it's not going to work for me. There's no point. And that can feel hopeless too, because you're like, what's the point of trying if it's not going to work and I'm not going to get better? And it feels so scary to take that step into that big exposure. You know, I, I was talking to one of the women in my OCD recovery group who has a very similar um, exposure that I had, which was to sit in playgrounds and just be calm not calm but just sit there and, and let anything happen that happens and another one I had was just to sit um, in a swimming pool like 
viewer section and it felt so wrong to me and it was so difficult and and there were days where i woke up and i would and i would say to this whatsapp group i can't do another day of these exposures i won't survive it and they were just like you've got to and i knew i had to so i would say that i was dragging myself through life for quite a while because i was so determined to do my homework it's like in some ways just setting the homework and not overthinking it not working out how you feel about it just go okay in your diary my diary's right here this week if i was recovering from ocd i would put in here monday this exposure tuesday this exposure wednesday this exposure thursday this exposure friday that exposure whatever it is and i would do it i wouldn't wake up and think how am i feeling today am i too ruined after yesterday's exposures no, I would just do it. That's what I did. And yeah, I'd have weeks off where I was just demotivated and hopeless. But I always used to think, well, that's another week further away from the life I want to live. So you have to weigh up what you want. Do you want to keep going with a life that you don't want and a life that's controlled by OCD? Or do you want to take those steps? So try not to worry too much about how you feel and the aftermath, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. It definitely did for me. It felt horrifying, terrifying. This isn't gonna work. Why am I doing this? And now all the things I did as exposures, I actually enjoy doing now. So I go out of my way to arrange those things with my children, doing lovely things. And after time, I got these moments of clarity and like these refreshing feelings and what I, deem true recovery to be is the things that used to scare you can bring you joy so say you're terrified of eating out due to contamination and then after recovery you love eating out or you have pocd and you're terrified of having kids and then after pocd you're so happy you had kids and being a parent is the best thing you ever did so i just want to leave with this the people in the group that have asked for this video everything you're feeling i felt and everyone watching this as well if you've been there everything you're feeling I felt, if not worse, like when you're explaining it, explaining it to me, I'm thinking, yeah, and even worse, like I can't describe how bad it was, but life today is like a normal life before OCD mostly, but also with lovely additional layers. It feels like I've unlocked levels of life that perhaps other people can't relate to who haven't suffered. So maybe smaller, lower level things stress them out. And I'm just like, that doesn't even phase me at all. And also just seeing like the beauty in simple things is definitely been something that I've really valued, like sitting with my friends and I'm like, this is just incredible. Like just sitting in a park and they're like, okay. And I'm like, but they don't get it. How refreshing it is to have a clear mind and have, you know, be comfortable with my thoughts and love myself and be happy with who I am. And also wholly accepting myself and others as well. So anytime someone's complaining to me about someone in their life, I can immediately go to, you know, empathy and compassion for that other person, even if I don't agree with their actions. And so the biggest thing I can leave you on is like, you have to decide what you want. No one can tell you, you know, people in the group will say, oh guys, I don't wanna do my exposure today don't do it then like i'm going to be bold there and say don't do it then because you have to have a bit of tough love if you want to get better you have to make a decision and be accountable yourself and you can have support from others but you need to want it and you're only lying to yourself and kidding yourself if you do compulsions without telling people if you push back your own recovery journey by not doing exposures not disputing your beliefs and really working towards you know unconditional self and life acceptance and you you just have to get to a place where no longer you're looking for outside validation or looking for that perfect instagram post that explains how you're feeling or makes you feel less alone you just need to go right that's it now i'm getting better nothing's going to stop me i already feel horrific why not feel a bit more horrific and just slowly but surely start to get better so i hope this has been useful I would love if you'd comment below with any other questions and I'm going to do my best to do more videos because I know I've not been very present recently, but I'll do my best. And thank you to the guys on the WhatsApp group who encouraged me to get on and do this video because there was a lot to say and you're not alone. Have a great rest of your day.